testimony, it's who, who or where it's coming from. Hallelujah. It must come the right side of you. Amen. I don't care what you do or what you say. You can speak the most accurate word or all the words in the Bible. If it's done in the Adamic nature, the only thing you will do, as you'll see, I'll show you, is this dispense good word in a cursed way. Mm -hmm. It's like taking good meat and cooking it into a dirty pot. Mm -hmm. right. But if you can speak clean words in the, in the renewed side, mm -hmm. then life is administered through this word. Amen. It's why Christ said, my words are, amen, is life and spirit, or spirit and life. You got but the flesh come from nothing. Right. If you utter it from the flesh side, you contaminate it. Mm -hmm. But like the Lord tells you, it's come, it's no, get out of this side, stand on this side, remember. It's not just what you do. You have to remember where you are standing or who you are being. It's even more important. Today we're hoping to finish off man fourfold condition. Man didn't choose this position. God, the man chose and fall into it, but God decreed it. God said, so when you look at man in his present state after the fall, man had become weak, he said. Man had become ungodly. He said man had become a sinner, and man became an enemy, amen, of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. This was the fourfold condition. The depictation of God when he look at man, he got, look what you have become. Mm -hmm. How you have fall so low. Ye who is made in the image and the likeness of God have become so ungodly. Ye who was made to do tasks ordained by God that was strong has become so weak. And you, he who was established in righteousness, amen, has become a sinner, breaker of the law. Enemies of the constitution. Last week we had looked at Deuteronomy 21, 22, and 23. And Deuteronomy 21 to 23 said, If a man commit a sin worthy of death and he is killed and hang on a tree, you understand? The man is cursed and the whole land will be cursed. So you go bury him before that afternoon because the whole land is going to be cursed. The sin he commit is a curse. It's sin. If not, he would not have died. But if you keep the curse around, he said the land in which it's hanged on is going to be what? Curse. curse yes. In essence, think of it this way. If you have, a, a, let's say you have a mango, or you have grapes, or apple, and, or, or anything in a box. You understand? If you have a box of apple, and one of them start to rotten, what happens if you don't take the rotten one out? Oh, the whole box will be rotten. Mm -hmm. So God said, the man that commit the sin that is cursed, it is great you cut it off. But if you leave what you cut off around, it's going to contaminate everything else. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. So God said, you got to bury it. Yes. You understand? It's like in, 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 in olden days when you had certain kind of sickness like typhoid, they had to just burn the body to make sure the whole community doesn't get what? Sick. Sick. Mm -hmm. So God says, good that you kill the contamination, but you can't leave it around. Mm. Because you're going to contaminate everyone and everything that comes in contact. That's atmosphere and land. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So God to make sure you bury the contamination. It is great you eliminate it, but now you've got to bury it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As a result, well, because we are born through Adam, we are born in the, in the curse. Mm -hmm. And we walk around, we're not buried. Mm -hmm. So we contaminate the whole what? Rams. Mm -hmm. We are born dead. And we walk around so we contaminate the whole earth. So as a result, you don't have to go there. I'm going to tell you where we're going to pick it up from. But I want you to understand and see yourself why God said you are weak, ungodly, sinful, amen, and an enemy. Because he made you to what? Live. But now you're dying. Because the soul that sin, you understand, must die. So that which God intent for life is now a curse contaminating his world that he made in six days. You understand? Or five days he made man in the six. Mm -hmm. You understand? And said it was good. Now it had become what? Contaminated. Cursed. So now we be in the curse. You don't have to go there. I'll just go to one scripture. We read the scripture last week just to bring us up to speed. God see us in this state now as just a curse it be. The scripture read, Christ purchased our freedom. Because remember, something that committed a sin, you understand, of a curse magnitude, 
or a sin worthy of death had to die, but not just die, it has to be buried so it doesn't what? Contaminate everything. Do you understand this process? If you have a cluster of grape in a barrel of grape that's bad and you don't get it out of there, mm -hmm. and if you just leave it on the open, mm -hmm. what happened? It starts to contaminate the whole kitchen, flies and everything and war, and the whole area starts to smell like rotten. Yeah. So it's not just to get it away, you have to what? Bury it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand the process? Yes. So we were in this cursed state, in essence, we were waiting to be buried. We were waiting to be buried. So the Bible said in Galatians 3, 13, Christ purchased our freedom, redeem us from the curse. We were in a cursed state waiting to be buried. Yes. Because when you come in a sin of death to be cursed, you understand you have to be buried, or if that you continue the contamination, which is what Satan technique was. Mm. From the first man is contaminated, all Satan does get, get him to move through the whole barrel of grave. So everything then that comes in contact with him, and because we all pass through him, everyone has become what? That's Curse. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then he turned to God, you know, you have to destroy the whole human creation. The whole human creation is like they have typhi, it has to be burned. Mm -hmm. His technique was brilliant. God had to find a way to sanctify us, meaning get the infection what? Away oh, from us. Yes. Do you know what he do? Did he um, did he separate the infection from us? No. He atoned for the effects of the of the infection, yes. but then he get rid of what the whole human race. Yes. God has a new race. That's what he was yes. talking to John yes. about. He reborn you yes. without the what typhi, yes. without the curse. Yes. Do you understand? You see, we look at ourselves from the physical side, but God looks at us from the spiritual side. Amen. And what God was looking, was his spirit still alive? Yes. No. Once your man was fall, the spirit man was dead. The soul was in the body, but not the way of God made it. You see, everyone you come in contact with, you see, let me ask you, if I keep my hand there in my back, you understand, and I walk to this wall, what do you think is the first thing will touch the wall? Your face. My nose. Yes. It's, it, it, you have to hear out from my what? Body. Every time you come in contact with somebody, there's something touches them first. Every time you come in contact with a place, a people, or a situation, something touches them. Do you know what is supposed to touch them? Your spirit. Your spirit. Not your soul, not your body, and definitely not your curse. Are you listening to me? So from God's perspective, you go, you're touching my rams and each other with curse. And soulishness. And flesh. And that which I am, I am a spirit. And I made you in spirit to be in the image of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That in touching what? Anyone or anything. When you are reborn out of, from the curse, when you touch someone... The first thing God wants to touch them is what? Spirit. John 6, 6 to 3. The flesh counted for nothing. The word I speak, it's spirit and life and truth. Amen. Glory. Amen. God wants when you... So when you speak a word, what God wants, the word must come from is spirit. And when you do a thing or get in a situation or a circumstance, what's supposed, where it's supposed to flow from is spirit. This is why you are reborn. You are reborn to get your spirit, man, yes. to come forth. Yes. You know, I was sharing this with my wife and my niece this morning. Once God has regenerated your spirit and the indwelling spirit start to reinforce and strengthen you in the man, the indwelling spirit indwell and Christ abide, then he has two major tasks. One, to keep reinforcing you, keeping you sanctified, clean. And the second one is to break the outer man. So that anyone or thing comes in contact with you, they comes in contact with your spirit. Hallelujah. There are many things going on in many of your life. God, God used people, things, and situation. You understand? Mm -hmm. And the only reason these things are going on in your life, it's to break your outer man so the spiritual man can protrude. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. You don't want no one comes in contact mm -hmm. with the cursed man. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit... Organize a series of situations and people and things yes. to break the outer man. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Because only when the alabaster jar is yes, broken, yes. the spike can art can. Yes. Come on. Preach. Thank you, Jesus. I heard someone say this recently. He said the most beautiful thing before God is a broken being. Yes. Because in the brokenness, yes. then the spike in our can come yes. forth. Yes, there's a broken before him. Yes. God loves when the alabaster jar is broken. Because the regenerated, reinforced, yes. strengthening, dwelling spirit can what? Come Protrude. Out. Hallelujah. There's nothing stops him more. Amen. Than your natural life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So God works relentlessly through the Holy Spirit to yeah. break you. Mm -hmm. The alabaster jar must come undone. Mm -hmm. Or the spike and art inside can't what? Come out. There's so many of you, Paul said it in 2 Corinthians 4. He said, In these hurting vessels, mm -hmm. you are carrying around. You understand? This hidden treasure. Yes. God wants the treasure out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he got to get past the hurting vessel. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. How we love the hurtly vessel. Mm -hmm. Dress it up and polish it and work out. <laughs> so put perfume, smell it, we feed it. We're obsessed with it. <laughs> and nothing good comes out of it. Because there's nothing good in it. It's what's inside is important. So we investments. You're, you're wasting all your time and energy. Are you listening to me? He got the spike in earth is inside him. Amen. Do, do you understand? Amen. He got, you need to be working to get it out. Mm -hmm. Not refining the casing. Oh, I put silk paint on it. Have you noticed I changed it white lately? Yellow, blue. Who cares about the vessel? <laughs> the other part. Amen. Amen. Only you and the devil. Amen. Do you understand? And when people come, we're the first thing we want to show them. Have you noticed? You don't need to see the treasure inside. You notice the jacket? Yeah. <laughs> They're meeting the outer man consistently instead of the inner man. Amen. So the Holy Spirit must dial up a series of events to get you off of your self and to get you into the work God is doing. Amen. The Bible said Jesus delivered you from dead works. You need to understand cursed works. You go, I get you out of there. Yes. And I put you into living works. Do you understand? Be careful where you're working, my brothers and yes. sisters. Look at somebody deep in the eyes and say, We have hidden treasure in us. We, we have, have hidden treasure, treasure in, in us. But the alabaster jar, the alabaster it must be broken. It must be broken. For the spike in earth to come out. You've got to Amen. understand. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise. Thank you. The Bible said, Jesus purchased our freedom. Redeem us from the curse. Understand. He redeemed us from the curse we, we were of the law. And its condemnation by himself becoming a curse for us. So Jesus substitute ego. I will become the curse that's supposed to be buried, mm -hmm. go in the tomb. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you can become the blessed. Wow. Thank you, Lord. You were set to be buried. Yes. Jesus said, I will take on the curse. Mm -hmm. take it so, on. so, so, you have to God have someone to bury. Yes. So you can what? Live. Something that cursed, just like God said, you got to bury that thing or you're going to curse it. You are, see, that's it. Yeah. Once you remain a curse, yeah. you're cursing the land, your family, your friend, anything you touch. Mm -hmm. You're like Jonah. If you go on a boat, the whole boat is cursed. Yeah. You come in a workplace, the whole workplace is cursed. You get in a relationship, the whole relationship. You get some money, the money. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You get in a conversation, the conversation is cursed. You become known as the guy. <laughs> Anything you say or anywhere you go, things goes bad. The guy is humanity. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. You are a Jonah walking around. Hmm. Except you're not typically honest like Jonah. Jonah knew he was a curse at that point. Now listen, Jonah, if you throw me over, everything will be fine. When the people down go, why are things going bad? You go, I don't know. I wonder who's doing it. It's you. Yes. 
Amen. We pretend. We go, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's Pastor Chuck. Maybe it's Jack. <laughs> and don't you. <laughs> you are the curse that has not been redeemed yet. Yes. Amen. Do you understand? Yes. We blame everyone and everything. Oh, this is just a bad time. Oh, it's the weather. Oh, it's, um, I don't know, um, the road. The moon. It's you. Amen. It's Tuesday. <laughs> we go, you just don't understand my words. You know, you're just not like me. No, you are the curse. Everything about you. Your words, your present, your very fact you're alive, that's the problem. You're supposed to be buried. Hallelujah. That's why we and God does have issue. Because God said, don't present the curse to me. I will bury it. You better appear to me as a new creation. You see, when I look at you, I better see resurrection. Amen. Then we better be just working on to get it out of you. But please don't bring Adam in front of me. Are you listening to me? Jesus became the curse. For it is written in the scripture. Curse is everyone. Is it someone? Everyone who hangs on a tree. Yes. Glory. Everyone. Yes. Creation. Every man that comes yes. through Adam is what? Curse. To the hang on the tree and bury before. You see, this hang on the tree to signify to know <laughs> that you are you, you're a curse. Yeah. But then you got to get rid of it before it contaminate everything. Amen. Satan's plan was brilliant. He just, uh, he's just waiting for God. Come on, you got to bury them. The whole earth is contaminated. He had lose his estate. So he go, you get rid of them, we can move right back in. We'll take care of it for you. Thank God he had a different plan. Mm -hmm. We had also read John 19.30 after Jesus died and atoned for us and buy back our freedom. He got it finished! Yes. All of humanity is no longer under a curse. Praise. It finished, it's done. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly done. I became the curse that so humanity can be free. Mm -hmm. The question then become free to do what? I love William McDonald. Free. Free from, free from the curse. curse. Free. Tell somebody you're free. free. Tell them you're free from the curse. Free. Free from the curse. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. I, I should pinch myself today. Amen. Sometimes you don't know how to worship. You really don't know the truth must be. Yes. If you know the truth, you can't help yourself but worship. Amen. I went by my sister this morning. She's bathing and worshiping, yelling at her. She's worshiping so much she didn't hear me all yet. Mm -hmm. I go, just let her worship. <laughs> Don't interrupt it. By God. Mm, speaking my God. <laughs> when you understand cursed and redemption, Amen. you will understand worship. Are you listening to me? Amen. You were Amen. just waiting to be buried. Yes. Amen. And the deception, I see, they used to laugh at you. You think. When you're a curse and contaminating everything, you have the right to live. So Satan is laughing. Okay, he's good. That noisy one, you clearly didn't hang him good enough. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But our Lord, redeem us. Mm -hmm. I want to show you a picture of the Bible dictation of what you were like under the curse. Mm -hmm. Then I want to try to wrap this process up by showing you where you are and what you ought to do and how you ought to praise God. Yes. Can we go to the 40 this morning? Yes, yes. Can we fellowship a little yes, together? Yes. Can we work, amen, in the life and the light of the Lord this morning? Yes. I, mean, I can't do this thing alone, but I need to do it with you. My God. Can we fellowship together? Yes. Amen. Can we fellowship on our Father's truth and kingdom? Amen. After all, you're not a curse. Mm -hmm. amen. amen. Can we dine at Jesus' table for a few moments? Amen. We were invited into the banquet because our Lord became the curse and was buried. Amen. 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 You see, and he didn't stop there. Because he resurrected, we are encouraged. You see, if Jesus was just died for cursedness and buried, why is we are no longer under the curse, we still don't have what? Life. We're free. But we don't have what? Life. But he resurrected. And it's that same resurrection life you have. Amen. God gives you new life. Say we have new life. Amen. It's my resurrection life. Death can't hold it. Death can't hold it. 
Remember our resurrection is. Resurrection is the life that can go into death and come out. Nothing except, no other force other than resurrection have ever entered death and what? Come, come out. The Bible says when you go into death, death is so strong, nothing can ever what? Come out. Mm -hmm. Death don't care when you die. You go, but I have little babies. You go, that has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. I got you. Mm -hmm. You can't go, I have good works in the other world. That go, I don't care. Do you understand? You can't go, I don't finish business. That go, I don't care. Yes. Only resurrection power. Go, whether you care or not, death, I'm coming out. <laughs> it can't hold you. Amen. Could not hold you down. You are the risen Lord. This is where Seshach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the clutches of death. There was a folk man in the fire. And they come what? Out. Mm -hmm. Death don't let you out the less resurrection life is what? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me show you something. Charles is going to bring this up. I want to show you the Bible draw a picture of what it's like to be in the curse. I want to show you the state and why we worship God. Ezekiel chapter 16 from verse 4 to 11. It is very important to understand because it is wrong for you who is out of the curse to speak into your life or any other one life as a cursed being. Are you listening to me? That which Jesus became a curse and was buried, it is wrong, wrong for you to put it on yourself or anybody what else. Are you listening to me, church? This is why the Bible said, be careful. The Bible said, the tongue will hold life and death. And if you can't control your tongue, you ain't going to control no other part of you. Amen. In this town, you better make sure where Jesus has positioned his church and speak in alignment with his church. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Including in your own life. Amen. If not, you're trying to speak against the works of Jesus. I read Ezekiel chapter 4. Charles, are we up? Yep.